Hi, this is the Science Chef. You're welcome to the first edition of our 2023 YA preparation series. In this video, we'll be sharing with you our top 10 commonly repeated topics in YA chemistry, which you must master before you write your 2023 YA chemistry examination. So let's start. The first topic on our list is elements, compounds, and mixtures. Under elements, compounds, and mixtures, you are expected to know the definition of an element, know the definition of a compound, and you are also expected to know what a mixture means. You must know the difference between compounds and mixtures. And you must also know the different types of elements, that metals and non-metals with their examples, and those that are gases at room temperature, those that are solids at room temperature, and those that are liquids at room temperature. Then you must also know the atomicity of elements those that are monatomic, those that are diatomic, and those that are polyatomic. Under mixtures, you must know the different types of mixtures. That's heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures, right? You must know the different types of separation techniques and the applications or the types of mixtures that they can be used to separate. The common among them must know fractional distillation, chromatography, crystallization, evaporation to dryness, filtration, and magnetic separation. You are expected to know all of them, but these are the key ones that questions are commonly asked on. Under compounds, you should be able to give examples of compounds and the constituent elements that make up the compounds, right? And you should also know the physical states of these compounds, those that are solids, those that are liquids, and those that are gases at room temperature. So those are the basic things that you need to know about elements, compounds, and mixtures. The second topic on our list is atomic structure. Under atomic structure, you must know the makeup of an atom. The in other words, the components of an atom, the subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, and their locations in the atom. The two major parts of the atom, the nucleus and the orbits. Then under your protons, neutrons, and electrons, you must know the relative charges and the relative masses of each of these atomic particles. Then you must be able to define atomic number the atomic number of an element and the mass number of an element, what they mean, right? And from there, you must know how to calculate the protons, neutrons, and electrons in the atom of an element. Then, you will to state the Dalton's atomic theory and, and also name the scientists and their contributions towards the development of atomic models like J.J. Thompson, and Schuster Ford, James Chadwick, and Co. Those are the basic things that you are meant to know under atomic structure. We now move to our third topic, which is periodic table and electronic configuration. Under periodic table and electronic configuration, you must first of all know what a periodic table is. Though they will not ask you to define a periodic table, but you must know the assumption behind the modern periodic table. And you must also know the difference between the Mendeleev's periodic table and the modern periodic table. In other words, you must know how to state the periodic law and you must know how to define periodicity. Then you must know the features of the periodic table. When I say features, I mean the groups, the periods, and the blocks. You don't just know, they must know their significance on the periodic table, what they represent on the periodic table, right? You must know that the elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons and they share similar chemical properties. And the elements in the same period have the same number of electron shells. And as you move from left to right across the period, right, you move away from metallic properties to non-metallic properties. You must know that group 1 and group 2 elements are found in the S block, while group 3 to group 0 elements are found in the P block. And in between group 2 and 3, you have the transition word elements. And of course, underneath, you have the F block, which contains the lanthanide and the actinide series. Also, you must know how to describe the trends of atomic properties on the periodic table, from the atomic radius to your electronegativity. You must know how they vary on the periodic table, their variations on the periodic table. Then you must also learn the group chemistry of group 1, group 2, group 7, and group 8 elements. And of course, also the first transition series from scandium to zinc. You must know how to write the electronic configuration and you must also know their physical properties and their chemical properties and their major differences between the S block metals. Then, when it comes to electronic configuration, you must know how to use the quantum numbers to write the electronic configuration of an element. 
when I say quantum numbers, I mean the SPDF notation, right? For now, in your syllabus, you're expected to know how to write the first 30 elements using the SPF notation. And from that, from the electronic configuration, you should be able to identify the location of an element on the periodic table. In other words, you should be able to tell the group and the period or the block that an element belongs on the periodic table based on this electronic word configuration. Now, we've got you covered in this case because we have videos on electronic configurations and quantum numbers from hydrogen to zinc. So we've covered everything for you. And all you need to do is to click on the link in the description and watch a playlist of our videos on electronic configuration. So the first topic on our list is gas laws. And on that gas laws, we are expected to know how to define or, so, or state the gas law starting from Boyle's law to Graham's law of diffusion. And you're not just expected to know how to state the gas laws, you must also know how to apply them or solve the calculation problems involving gas laws, right? Now, concerning the gas laws, we have a collection of videos on the gas laws, right from Boyle's law to Graham's law of diffusion. So we have a playlist for your gas laws. If you have issues with gas laws, let your mind be at peace because we have added the link to those videos in the description. So just click on the link of the playlist on gas laws and you have all the videos that you can watch those videos and learn more about gas laws and how to solve problems on gas laws. The fifth topic on our list is acids, bases, and salt. On the acids, bases, and salt, you are expected to know the definitions of acids, bases, and salt, especially for acids and bases. Now, using the three different concepts, the Arrhenius concept, the uh, Lewis concept, and the uh, Brunsellori concept, right? You must know how to define an acid or a base using these three concepts. Apart from that, you must know the properties of an acid. You must know the properties of an acid, the physical and the chemical properties of an acid, right? Then you must know the basicity of an acid, right? The basicity of an acid, when an acid is said to be monobasic, dibasic, and tribasic, right? And also, not just knowing the basicity, you must also know examples of acids with their basicities, right? Then, you must know the differences between your concentrated and dilute acids and also the difference between your strong and weak acids. Then from there, you should be able to state the three major chemical properties of acids. Now, when it comes to physical properties of acids, please take note of this. Effect of acid on litmus is no longer considered as a physical property. It's now considered as a chemical property in your YF was syllabus. It's actually a chemical property, but before now it has always been taken to be a physical property, but it is a chemical property. So when you are asked to write the properties or physical properties of acids, don't write action on litmus as a physical property. Just be silent on it. And also when you're asked to write the chemical properties of acids, write the three common, that's what I will advise you to do anyway, write the three common chemical properties. Reaction with metals, reaction with alkalite, and reaction with trigocarbonates. Four. So, on the action of litmus, just be silent on it. Except you see it in your objectives. If you see it in your, in your objectives, then pick it as a chemical property and not as a physical property. Then, also, you must know the uses of some acids. They commonly ask ones are your HCl. You must know the use of HCl for pickling of metals, right? You know the use of HNO3. As a rocket fuel, you must know the use of uh, H2SO4 as a drying agent or a dehydrating agent or and as an electrolyte in car batteries, and the use of tartaric acid for making baking powder, right? And the use of uh, citric acid for making fruit juice. Those are the common uses of acids that are expected to take note of. Before we talk of bases, you must know the three methods of preparing acids, dissolving acid and hydrides in water, right, and using a strong acid to drive or produce a volatile acid from its salts, right, volatile acid like HNO3 and HCl from their salts, and also a direct combination, direct, direct combination of the elements that make up the acid like hydrogen and chloride to give us hydrogen chloride gas. Then, based on that basis, you are expected to know, apart from the definition of a base, you should be able to state the properties of a base. Another property of it, there are just two major properties of a base in your syllabus. is the reaction with the acids to form salt and water and also 
reaction with ammonium salt to liberate ammonia gas when heated, right? Then you must know how to define the neutralization reaction and also the uses of some bases. You must know the uses of some bases like magnesium hydroxide, which is used in, as an anti acid in the milk of magnesia. Then also, you must know how to calculate your pH and your pOH, also, and also your, your indicators. You must know how to define your indicators and the different colors of the indicators in the different media. Then from, uh, from there, we move on to the salt. So under your salt, apart from knowing the definition of the salt, you must know the different types of salt, right? With the examples, you know there are five types of salt, your normal salt, your acid salt, your basic salt, your double salt, and your complex salt. You must know how to define these five types of salt and their different examples, right? And the conditions under which they can be what formed. Then, on the, in your double salt, you must know that a double salt is a salt that will dissolve in water to give you three different ions. Three different ions, two cations and one anion, right? Then you must know the methods of preparing salt based on their solubility, right? And also the methods of recovering salt, right? In addition to this, you must also know how to calculate your water of crystallization in hydrated salts, right? And also the behavior of substances when exposed to what atmosphere that's your fluorescence the liquid sense and hygroscopy right these are the things you need to master in your acids bases and salt now to make things easy for you we had prepared a complete series on acids bases and salt right and the link of the playlist is added in the description so just check it out and learn everything that you need to learn about acids, bases, and salts. That then takes us to our sixth topic, which is mole concept. On that mole concept, you must know how to define a mole. And in defining a mole, you must know how the mole is related to mass, volume, and number of particles. And then you must know how to apply this concept in solving problems. Example, your mass-mass relationship, your mass-volume relationship, and your volume volume relationship right those are the applications of mole concept right in fact generally your what stoichiometry you must know how to apply mole concept in solving problems in your underworld stoichiometry as usual we also have a list of videos that we have created on mole concept right we have videos on introduction to mole concept mass mass relationship of mole concept mass volume relationship and volume volume relationship with examples on each of these topics so we've added the link to the playlist on more concepts in the uh, description just check it out and learn more about more concepts our seventh topic is electrochemistry in order electrochemistry you have electrolysis and electrochemical cells or electropotentials right so under electrolysis you must know the basic concepts of electrolysis the definition of electrolysis the definition of an electrolyte, the what an electrode means, the mechanism of electrolysis, different products that you get when you electrolyte a certain electrolyte, right? And also, under your electrode potential, you should be able to define what an electrochemical cell is, and you also should be able to define the standard electrode potential of an electrode. Then you should also state the differences between electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell, right? And also state the different types of electrochemical cells that like your primary cells and secondary cells. Then only your primary cells should be able to give examples of primary cells like your Daniel cell and Leclanchy cell with their what uh, components, right? And the reactions that occur at the different electrodes. In fact, a sum in summary, we have a complete set of videos on electrochemistry for you, right? Just like other topics, we have a playlist of all the things you need to know. On electrochemistry we have added the link in the description so just check it out the eighth topic on our list is chemical equilibrium you know, another chemical equilibrium you must know how to define chemical equilibrium you must know how to define dynamic equilibrium you must know the conditions under which a reaction can attain equilibrium right then you must know how to state Lothar-Tellis principle right and also describe the factors that affect equilibrium position of a reversible word reaction good and then you must know how to apply the Tartellus principle in describing the Haber process and the contact process 
describe the herbal process, but the major things you need to know are the reactants, the products, right? Then the conditions of the reactions, that the temperature, the pressure, the catalysts used, and the yield, right? And what can be done to increase the yield of ammonia, right? Then also you should also know the sources of the reactants used in the herbal world process, the nitrogen and hydrogen. The other contact process, the same thing. You must know the conditions for the reaction, the temperature, pressure, and the catalyst used and the yield, right? And what adjustment can be made to increase the yield of SO3 in that reaction. So those are the basic things that you need to master on that chemical equilibrium. So that then takes us to our ninth topic, redox reaction. Now, there's no chemistry examination you will write without finding a question on redox reaction. That's to show you how important this topic is, right? Because the majority of the reactions in chemistry are redox reactions. So under redox reaction, you must know how to define the redox reaction, and you must also know how to define the different components of the redox reaction, that's oxidation and reduction, using the different concepts. Electron transfer, oxidation state, in terms of oxygen transfer, hydrogen transfer, and their likes, right? But the most commonly tested concept is obviously electron transfer and change in oxidation world states. So you need to know all of them and how to identify them. Then you must know how to define oxidizing agents and reducing agents using those same word concepts. And you must know how to identify them in a reaction, right? Then you must know how to test for oxidizing agents and also test for reducing agents. And above all, you must know how to balance your redox equations, right? Starting from your simple ionic redox equations to complex ionic uh, redox equations in acidic medium, right? That's what your syllabus says. You must know how to balance redox equations in acidic medium. Now, we have made things easy for you as usual. So we have a complete set of videos on redox reaction, right from the basic concepts to balancing of redox equations, right? And we have added a link of the playlist in the description. So just check it out and learn more about redox reaction if you are having challenges in redox reaction. That then brings us to the last topic in our list, which is organic chemistry. And under organic chemistry, we are expected to learn the upper nomenclature of organic compounds. Then you must learn about your hydrocarbons, your alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. You must learn about them and how to differentiate them. You must learn about alkanes as saturated hydrocarbons and alkenes and alkynes as unsaturated hydrocarbons, right? You must learn about the reactions that alkanes undergo. That's the substitution reaction, right? You must know that combustion reaction is a reaction that all organic compounds undergo better. That substitution reaction is a reaction that is common to only what alkanes, right? Then you must learn about the laboratory preparation of methane and the precautions that must be taken in that process. Then learn about the properties of methane and also the uses of alkanes generally as sources of what fuels, right? Then you must know some facts about methane as a marsh gas. Methane is called a marsh gas and it is produced in swampy areas and it is a product of the anaerobic respiration of vegetative matter, not uh, organic matter. It is only plant matter when they decompose in the absence of oxygen that produce methane, right? It's also produced in the alimentary can or digestive tract of uh, ruminant animals, right? Fine. So those are the things you need to know about alkanes. Then, under alkanes, and alkynes, you must know that they are unsaturated, which I've stated earlier, and their major reaction is addition was reaction. You must know how to differentiate them from the alkanes, which is test one saturation using bromine water and dilute acidified chemino form, right? Then you must also learn about their reactions, the addition reactions, and also maybe for alkenes, their oxidation reactions too. Fine. Then you must know how to differentiate between alkenes and alkynes. The reactions that will help you differentiate between alkenes and alkynes. So these are the basic things you need to master under uh, alkenes, alkenes and alkynes. And also, you should also know the common uses of alkenes. That is um, the use of ethene for ripening of fruit and also for making plastics, right? And also, you, God, you must learn about cracking, how 
alkenes are produced industrially from cracking. Also learn about the laboratory preparation of what? Alkenes, right? From alcohol and concentrated H2SO, so that's um, dehydration of alcohols. Also the uses of alkynes, especially ethane as a fuel in miners' lamp and also uh, used for making oxyacetylene uh, word flame. These are the major uses of ethane. Then from there, you must know about your alcohols. You must learn about your alcohols. And under alcohols, you must learn about the classification of alcohols into primary, secondary, and tertiary. And also in terms of the number of hydroxyl groups attached, that's monohydric and dihydric or polyhydric alcohols. Then you must learn about the oxidation of the different types of alcohols. Then you must know the physical properties of alcohols. The physical properties in terms of boiling points, why they have high boiling point, which is as a result of the hydrogen bonding in them, right? Then the reactions of alcohols. The reactions of, the reactions of alcohols with uh, sodium to liberate hydrogen gas. The reaction of alcohol with uh, carboxylic acid to produce esters and the different dehydration reactions of alcohol in the presence of concentrated H2SO4 to form alkenes and ethers, right? So you must master this because those are where your questions will come from, right? Then your carboxylic acids, right? You must also know the reason why carboxylic acids have higher boiling points than alcohols, right? And also how to name them. Of course, you should have learned that under IUPAC nomenclature. Then also, you should be able to describe chemical properties of carboxylic acids. Then, of course, the uses of carboxylic acids and uses of alcohols. And then your aldehydes and ketones. Then you must know how to differentiate between aldehydes and ketones and how they are formed from the oxidations of different types of alcohols. Then, of course, your aromatic compounds, your benzene, right? You must know about the benzene structure. You must know that benzene is a compound that undergoes a like, base resonance, right? Benzene is a compound that exhibits resonance and that why there's a base resonance because of the, uh, the localized electrons that it has, right? Also, the reaction is uh, that benzene also undergoes a substitution reaction, but it can also undergo addition reaction to form cyclohexane, right? You must know the formula for benzene, that's C6H6, and the derivatives of benzene and the uses of the different derivatives of benzene like phenol for making drugs or for making antiseptics that like your aniline for making drugs like your toluene right that's methyl benzene for making explosives so you must know the uses of these derivatives then we now move to polymerization still under organic chemistry you must know what polymerization means right the different types of uh, polymerization addition polymerization and condensation polymerization with their examples examples of addition polymers and condensation polymers you must know the differences between thermoset and thermoplastic polymers right you also must know the difference between natural and synthetic polymers right now the ones you have mentioned before are synthetic polymers any polymer that can be made in the lab is a synthetic word polymer right or, or it's called a plastic whereas Natural polymers occur naturally, and examples are carbohydrates and proteins. Know that fats and oils are not polymers, but they are macromolecules, right? So you must learn about your carbohydrates, types of carbohydrates, your monosaccharides, your disaccharides, and your polysaccharides, and the differences between your complex sugars and simple sugar, right? Your polysaccharides are complex sugars, while your monosaccharides and disaccharides are simple sugars. So know the differences between these two and how they can be what from know the product of the hydrolysis of polysaccharide, that hydrolysis of starch, right? What will, be, what will be the end product of the hydrolysis of starch? And also when it comes to uh, protein, know the product of the hydrolysis of protein, right? What's the end product of that? That's amino acids. And what will happen when you heat protein to a certain temperature of 40 degrees what celsius and they will get what denatured i know that most enzymes enzymes are what proteins that's why you're not expected to use enzymes above what 40 degrees celsius then i forgot learn about your fermentation under alcohols learn about your fermentation yes that's industrial manufacture of alcohol fermentation please learn about it all the different steps the enzymes used in each stage uh, of fermentation starting from the hydrolysis of starch through the uh, actual fermentation of glucose. 
learn about a master them know how to define fermentation right as a process fine then if you're having challenges understanding organic chemistry i've made some videos on organic chemistry like iopag nomenclature of organic compounds generally and also iopag nomenclature of hydrocarbons that's alkenes alkenes and alkynes then naming of uh, alkanols right and their classification and also isomerism yes learn about isomerism if you have a video on isomerism and the different types of isomerism starting from structural isomerism to geometric isomerism and the uh, optical word isomerism so we have videos that can help you understand organic chemistry so we've added the link in the description right so that brings us to the end of our top 10 commonly repeated topics in wire chemistry which you must master before you write your 2023 wire chemistry examination so if you're able to learn anything from this video hit the like button subscribe to this channel if this is your first time here and turn on the notification bell to stay updated with subsequent word uploads right and keep fighting and don't give up till i see you when i'll see you